7 News with Peter Mitchell. Manhunt, police search for the killer of a Dandenong taxi driver. Out of work, a Victorian tyre factory sacks 500 people. And Jubilee Gathering, footy makes way for religion at Colonial Stadium. Good evening. First tonight, the body of a taxi driver found dumped by the side of a road. The Dandenong cabbie was shot as he sat in the front seat of his taxi. Tonight, a massive police manhunt is underway to find the killer. Two security guards on routine patrol found 33-year-old Cameron Rudd's body dumped at the end of Centre Kirkham Road in Dandenong. He was wearing a Dandenong taxi's uniform and police immediately put out an alert for his missing cab. His last contact with the base was at 10.30pm when he picked up a fare in Cranbourne. We believe it may have been a uh, pick-up off the street. Seven hours after the cabbie's body was discovered, a delivery driver located the bloodstained taxi in a Cranbourne car park. We're satisfied from examining it that, uh, in fact, the driver was shot in the cab, in the driver's seat. Extensive searches of both crime scenes failed to find any trace of the murder weapon and police are still trying to establish where the camp was when the driver was killed. The father of two was attached to Cranbourne taxis as a relief driver. Well, we're not too happy about it, but uh, let's hope they get them. This driver supporting calls for video cameras in taxis. I think it's a necessity, yeah. Yeah, I do. Mr Rudd's cab was fitted with a distress alarm, but it's not clear if it was activated. Police won't reveal if anything was stolen from the cab, but they do want to speak to anyone who either hired or saw the vehicle on the night of the murder. Anybody who saw it, travelled in it, uh, <laughs> saw something strange about it at any time, saw it parked. The current model Ford taxi carried the registration C9048 on the number plate and vehicle. Darren Linton, 7 News. Another jobs blow tonight for Victoria. Almost 500 staff members from South Pacific Tyres Summerton plant told they'll be out of work by Christmas. The worst possible news before Christmas for 500 manufacturing workers. South Pacific Tyres, part owned by Pacific Dunlop, slashing its workforce by more than half at its Summerton plant. After a financial loss of $4 million, management will now import cheap and heavy truck tyres from China. Currently, the Asian market is still tariff protected, so that uh, our market is free to export into Asia. There's a 35% tariff on most countries there, and we just can't export competitively. Unions are outraged at the exodus of manufacturing jobs in Victoria, demanding immediate negotiations with the company and state government. I think it is time for the federal government to step up and take some responsibility for the flood of manufacturing jobs disappearing into Asia. It's more bad news for the Brax government. 620 manufacturing job losses in two days. And earlier this month, Holden scaled back its Victorian operations while email moved its business to South Australia. Clearly, we've got to stop the exodus of jobs and cut business taxes in Victoria. The Premier under pressure defending the government's job record in Parliament. The state with the highest job growth, the highest number of jobs created, 81,500, has been Victoria. Has been Victoria! Union delegates arriving at the factory late this afternoon to brief members on the redundancies as the workers prepare to head home, uncertain about their future. Mitchell Kaplan, 7 News. Victorian Governor Sir James Gobbo is believed to have suffered a heart attack while in Hong Kong en route to a goodwill visit to our Japanese sister state Nagoya. Sir James was admitted to hospital on Monday, but statements from the Premier's office and Government House have not officially revealed the nature of the illness. He's expected to make a full recovery but will not return to Melbourne for two weeks. Claims tonight the Victorian police force is in turmoil. It follows a leaked memo from one of the state's most senior officers expressing alarm at the rate of resignations. The police association says the force is in crisis. Their claim backed by the leaked memo in which acting Deputy Commissioner Ray Shuey expresses alarm over the departure of 103 officers in a month. We call them for a rescue package to be implemented urgently by the Chief Commissioner and the State Government. While the association says continued low morale within the rank and file is the main reason for a high number of resignations, Mr Shuey disagrees. People that I've spoken to haven't left for morale reasons. They've all had some other 
job opportunity that they've picked up or they've taken on a, an issue of retirement. But in the memo, he writes of the damage the exodus is causing the force and asks for other senior officers to consider strategies to stem the flow. Police command believes the unusually high number of departures last July was because officers were waiting for the end of the financial year to retire so they could collect a higher rate of superannuation. Monthly departures from the force average at about 45. The reasons why our members are leaving the force are clearly linked to the, the cuts and the reforms that were put in place under Kennett and Conrad. The message here is quite simple. We are increasing police strength. We will get the 800 extra uh, whilst the previous government was cutting them. Peter Morris, 7 News. Prime Minister Howard has finally arrived at the APEC summit in Brunei after two of his VIP aircraft were stuck on the tarmac with mechanical problems. The delay was an embarrassment for Mr Howard, who missed important trade talks. Better late than never. John Howard finally touched down in Brunei nine hours late after not one, but two RAAF Boeing 707s broke down en route to the Apex summit. Mr Howard forced to apologise to his Singaporean counterpart after the postponement of their talks. But the interruption to Mr Howard's schedule proved to be only a minor stumble, as the Prime Minister announced Australia would sign a free trade agreement with Singapore probably within a year. We will aim to put everything in the agreement. The Singaporean Prime Minister seeing the deal as a way of speeding up Apex free trade objectives. Those who can run faster should run faster. With the leaders of the 21 Apex member countries arriving in Brunei, US President Bill Clinton had this observation on the uncertainty of the US election. I know I can safely predict that this will be my last APEC summit. I just don't know who will be here next year. <laughs> Later today, Mr. Howard will turn his attention to the region with a scheduled meeting with Indonesia's President Wahid, whose on-again, off-again visit to Australia continues to aggravate relations between the two countries. In Brunei, Glen Milne, 7 News. Storms tonight in Melbourne's northern suburbs are making peak hour driving hazardous. Emergency crews have been called to a single car accident just north of Craigieburn on the Hume Highway. A Commodore sliding out of control in the wet collided with a tree. Three people have been injured. A record crowd at Colonial Stadium today and there wasn't a football in sight. A huge school mass turning Melbourne's newest home of sports into a giant religious venue. Football might be considered a religion in Melbourne, but it was a Catholic jubilee rather than a footy match that drew Colonial Stadium's biggest crowd to date. 70,000 students joined 100 priests, the Premier, Acting Prime Minister and Governor General to celebrate Mass, marking 2,000 years of Christianity. The jubilee is being celebrated around the world. It means a lot to me about um, Jesus' family and God's kingdom and Occasions such as today's are rare and precious. The Catholic Archbishop of Melbourne delivered a message of reconciliation and spoke of Australia's Good Samaritans, urging Melbourne's youth to take care of those less fortunate. You deserve the best that we adults can offer. And tomorrow, you will be a living force in our nation. When the final siren sounded, they were still celebrating. Emma Power, 7 News. Coming up after the break, turning back the clock, Victoria's 150th birthday celebrations. And later, another birthday bash, this time for 170-year-old Harriet.